Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to do the last game from the Doprastav Open, uh, round 7, which was played uh, on Sunday the 21st of April in the afternoon, after my crushing defeat in the Sicilian, which you could see in the last video if you saw the video. So I played uh, a young player, 14 or 15 years old, slightly higher rated than I am, uh, didn't have any time to prepare because I was the last board to finish round 1. Uh, we were the last board playing and I only had half an hour so I rushed to the toilet and get something to eat and stuff like that. As I mentioned in the previous video I was crushed and completely tired uh, even before the first game because I got no sleep and before the second game I couldn't see anymore. And I had no idea what my opponent played, basically. Uh, but when I'm black, I'm happier to go into the game unprepared because I know what I play and there's hardly anything that can surprise me in my opening. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, uh, he played pawn to e4. I played c6, the Karo Khan. I didn't really want to play the Scandinavian when I'm tired and I've also been preparing something else, but I'm not ready to play it yet. So, yeah, I went for the Karo Khan. And uh, we have d4, d5, e d5, c d5. Now I was looking forward to c4, something aggressive, uh, the pawn of attack, but he played bishop to d3. And uh, now, yeah, we got a normal exchange Karo Khan, uh, knight c6, c3, knight f6, bishop to f4, that's the best move. Uh, black is considered to be equal here, and I've been studying this position for a long time because it troubles me a lot. No variations really work for black, and even though the engines say black is equal, it's really hard to prove that you are equal. Uh, the best move for, for black here is bishop to g4, and uh, after bishop to g4, a move such as knight to f3 or f3 is just uh, not a good move, uh, but white has the aggressive queen to b3. And after queen to b3, I, I know all of these lines, but I didn't really want to get into them because I'm not comfortable playing them. So the main move here is e5. And after queen takes b7, e takes f4, queen takes c6 check, the bishop returns back, and queen to a6. So this is supposed to be equal, but it's really messy, and uh, I really don't understand these positions. It's six pawns for, for black, five pawns for uh, seven pawns for white. So white is a pawn up, but black is supposed to be uh, fine here. I don't... I don't really want to play positions like these. Uh, another move after uh, bishop f4, uh, I'm sorry, after bishop f4, bishop g4, queen to b3, is the move queen to b6, and after queen b6, a b6, white has an edge, has an advantage, so that's really not a good option. And after bishop g4, queen b3, there's another move, queen to d7, which is probably the most passive move, but it's equal, knight d2, e6, h3, bishop h5, knight gf3, bishop d6, and here, here, queen b7, rook b8, and the position is equal once again. After the queen moves, you cannot take here. Uh, there's some issues concerning that. Uh, I think bishop uh, b5 is the move, and you're in trouble. Uh, but, but yeah, as I said, uh, equal. Queen to d7 is equal. So after bishop to f4, I didn't want to play bishop g4, which I thought he knew, because it's the main move. I played the sideline, which I like playing, and that's queen b6. Uh, the engines think that now black isn't equal anymore, but I really find it hard for white to prove that. Uh, he played queen to b3, which is... Well, okay, well, queen to c2 is supposed to be the best move, defending and putting your queen on this diagonal. Uh, looking at h7, after queen b3 I have to take a b3, and now g6, my plan is to fianchetto my bishop, castle, and go for e5. He doesn't really have that much on the queen side, uh, with b4, b5... Uh, Still, there could be some pressure because he's a pawn up on the queen side, but it's far away from that. Here he surprised me. I think knight f3 castles is the best plan. He played f3, wanting to play king to f2, but uh, I'm not sure about this move. Okay, it does stop knight e4, but uh, how important is that? I'm, I'm not really sure. And they want to play e5, so e4 is going to come with the target on f3. Uh, bishop g7, king to f2, castles, he played knight to d2, and they played rook to e8, preparing the move e5. Here I thought I was equal, uh, not really much for either side, but uh, he has some doubled pawns here, and I know the position really well, I know my plans, so I was comfortable playing it. I can either go for bishop f5, uh, getting my pawn uh, to f5, or I can go for... Uh, 
for e5 or I can go for knight h5 f5 which I did go for in the game. Knight h5 f5 is a plan that the engine doesn't like but when the queens are off the board I like it uh, a lot because it sort of restricts white's play even uh, especially when the king is castled but with the king on f2 it works as well. Knight e2, bishop d7. I want to finish my development be before I play e5 it's not running away. Uh, rook h to e1, knight h5, forcing the bishop back. And now if the bishop goes here, I'm just going to take it, have the bishop pair and the solid game. It will also be reinforcing the e5 break. And when the bishop retreats to e3, as it did in the game, it sort, sort of creates a cluster of white pieces. Okay, the king should be on g1. Creates a cluster of white pieces which don't really have that much scope. So knight h5 is an uncomfortable uh, move for white to meet because it often uh, misplaces the bishop and puts it in front of the rook. And the rook has to be developed to e1. After bishop to e3, I can play e5, which is objectively the best move, and I know this exact position with the king on g1, but I like the move f5 and returning my knight back to f6, so I decided to go for that. f5, here he played knight to f4, and I could play knight f6, but then I have some problems uh, with knight here if the bishop should move, let's say, uh, knight f6, uh, something bishop moves and then knight e6 could be un uncomfortable where if the knight sits on e6 i have a bad position if i take the rook comes to e6 so i have a bad position so i decided to trade and still i can go for e5 so knight f4 bishop takes f4 and now i can go for e5 immediately uh, the resulting position is always an isolated pawn on d5 which is okay Slightly uh, better when the queens are still on the board, but fine without the queens on the board as well. And the move f5 restricts the bishop, restricts the knight, and especially when I do play e5 and then dissolve my isolated d5 pawn, this f5 pawn is still restricting the knight from entering e4, which is why I like positions with f5. And here uh, I thought about e5, of course, that's the main move, but I saw one variation which I was so tempted to play and I almost played it. I calculated it for about half an hour uh, or 20 minutes uh, just to see the consequences of it. And I saw that I get three pawns, so I was looking at knight d5. Uh, he has to take bishop d5 check. I was looking at bishop e3 because that's probably the best move. Uh, takes here, uh, and now if uh, if he plays rook takes a7, which I was worried about, uh, this doesn't work, because if rook a7, I have the move d4. Uh, and if he takes my rook, I take the bishop first with check, and takes, takes the rook, uh, rook takes e7, and uh, this position is, I thought, uh, better for me, because I have the bishop pair, and everything is kind of solid. Uh, I think my bishop, uh, my dark squared bishop is much better than his knight. So I thought this position would be fine. Uh, but yeah, I didn't think he was going to return the piece. So after knight takes d4, c takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop e3, bishop takes b2. He doesn't have to play rook a7, he can play rook, e to, uh, rook a to d1. And now I was planning the move e5, uh, restricting his pieces. Uh, knight b1, I think, was a very solid approach. e4, f4, f4. Bishop c4, d c4, rook takes, c takes, knight d2. And here I also thought that uh, I'm okay, perhaps not, uh, because okay, the knight is stronger than my pawns, but I have a very strong a5 pawn. So basically I saw something similar to this position and I decided not to sacrifice and I wasted too much time. So after bishop takes f4, I was really tempted to take, but in the end I didn't. Okay, I played the move a6, uh, which restricts his pieces, stops uh, the move b5, it's a useful move, and I wanted to see what he is going to do, because it's not really clear that uh, white can do much. I still have the move e5, regardless of what he plays, he didn't stop it, he cannot stop it in one move, so a6 was sort of a waiting move. Here he played bishop c2, which surprised me, that's a really bad move. Uh, usually in the exchange, Karo Khan, the rook goes to c8, and he just put the bishop in front of the rook, which is bad. Rook a to c8, now I'm stopping the move b4. Uh, his idea with bishop to c2 was obviously b4, bishop b3, getting on this uh, dangerous diagonal, but now b4 is stopped. And he, almost without thinking, played b4 anyway, and now white is busted, this position is just busted. Uh, I can take on b4, I can take on d4. If I take on b4 and bishop to b3, he isn't threatening my knight and the, the d5 pawn because I have this check, just completely winning. Uh, I don't really want to take the exchange, although I could, I don't know. 
I can take here and allow this, but I don't think I have to. I would rather save my pawn with, with e6. But anyway, uh, I didn't take on b4. Uh, I took on d4 because the central pawn is much more important. Now e5 is just uh, completely uh, unguarded and I can push, to push e5 through whenever I want. He played bishop to d1 and here... I went wrong. This is the first position in which I went wrong. The move here, of course, is e5. And after bishop to e3, I can do whatever I want. I can go knight c6 now, and let's say bishop b3, threatening my pawn. I always have a bishop e6, uh, bishop c5, let's say bishop f7. Everything is defended. Extra central pawn, doubled pawns on the queen side for him. The position is just busted for, for white. However, after bishop to d1, I didn't want to play e5 immediately for some strange reason. I played uh, knight to c6, and now he played a very good move. He played a very tricky move, knight to b3. I expected bishop to b3 all this time, and after bishop b3, I was just going to play e6 and solidify my center and be, be better. However, after knight to b3, he is now threatening knight to c5, threatening my b7 pawn, threatening my, my d7 bishop. And uh, yeah, I have to stop this threat. Uh, e5 can be played uh, as an intermezzo. Uh, after e5, he did play knight c5. And now I thought that I shouldn't really be taking on f4, even though taking on f4 is it's just the best move. So let's say I take here. He takes here. Take the rook. King takes. Uh, I don't know. I can play whatever I want. Uh, I can play d4. Uh, weakening his position, everything is now just dropping, and this is busted. However, after knight to c5, I complicated matters with what I thought was a tempo move, rook c7, because I want to double up my rooks somewhere on e7, probably anyway, and now he has to move the bishop, because my rook is defended. He played bishop to d2, and now I played bishop to f8, uh, wanting to exchange his strong knight. Bishop b3, bishop takes c5, b takes c5, bishop to e6, Bishop to a4 was played, and now bishop to f7. And after the move f4, e4, uh, this position is a dead draw. Why is it a dead draw? Because he now takes on c6. I take on c6 with the rook. If I take with the pawn, I'm losing a6. And this is now opposite colored bishops, uh, seven pawns against six. Uh, some hopes for a pawn break, but not really that much, and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a dead draw. I actually checked the position with, the, with an engine because I was extremely frustrated. And the lesson is that uh, when you are better, uh, you shouldn't rush regardless of how tired or whatever you are. I was a pawn up in a winning position and the only thing I had to prevent was exchanging off into an opposite colored bishop position because with a lot of pawns on the board, it can get locked down easily and no progress can be made. So this was just a terrible, uh, terrible game. I should have won it easily. Now there was a lot of maneuvering, but I couldn't do anything uh, despite my extra pawn. Bishop e3 was played here. Rook a8, rook a5, rook c8, c bishop d4, bishop e8, king e3, bishop b5. And you can see that I. the only hope for me is something on the king side with uh, h6 and then g5. So I tried that in a while, king f7. Rook e1, rook g8, I want to play g5, h4, h6, rook h1, rook a to d8, and now I can play g5 and uh, probably lose because his rook comes to h7, the bishop is guarding g7, so it's really tough to break through. I tried for a little while, uh, you could see on his face that he just wanted to draw and I really wanted to win, winning this would be uh, a nice plus in the tournament, and yeah. Just a lot of maneuvering. I tried to make some breaks work. In the end, I was looking at the move a5 even, just sacrificing the pawn here and trying to uh, trying to make something work like this. Let's say rook here, rook here. Uh, let's say here, here, rook here, here. And then once I drag all the pieces away, perhaps g5 can be played, but yeah, it's, there's there's nothing in the position. So somewhere around, okay, here, king d7, bishop e5, we agreed to a draw. Uh, the engine, when I turn it on, says that black is better, almost minus one, but it doesn't know how to win. It wants me to play h5 all the time, and I, I actually left it on for a long while, and it couldn't find anything. There, there are no winning plans, and 
yeah, there are no winning plans for Black, despite the engine thinking that Black is better. So, it was very frustrating to draw this game, because uh, obviously I was winning, he blundered the pawn, and not just any pawn, the d4 pawn, which makes e5 a perfect break. And instead of knight c6, had I played e5, the game would be easily winning, he couldn't do anything. So, instead of uh, being... 15 or 16 points ahead, Fide, uh, ELO points ahead, I was uh, at 7.6, which is still a plus score, but could have been better. All in all, the tournament finished at 3.5 out of 7, which is, I usually get more than 50%, and I should have gotten more than 50% here. Round 1 against uh, the Grandmaster should have been uh, better, I should have won that. This one I should have won. And the other results were sort of deserved when you when you put that all together. All in all, uh, some things to get from the tournament. Uh, you should never go to a tournament unless uh, you can stay at a decent place. That's It was really tough to, to stay at that filthy uh, hostel with the bad people uh, that partied every night. Because you cannot get uh, any sleep and... Uh, yeah, that's one thing I'm going to try to change. Unless I, I unless I have enough money to play uh, a tournament and stay at a decent hotel, I'm not saying an expensive hotel, just something with a normal room, then I'm not going to go. And uh, the other thing is, for, for one game, I was unprepared. I didn't know the theory. I can never let that happen again. The third thing, when playing stronger opponents, I need to learn how to calm down and... Uh, stay focused despite being better. If I'm better against a stronger opponent, I tend to panic and uh, start shaking my hands, start sweating, and I lose the game as it happened in round one. And against weaker opponents, uh, I played one game which was really bad, I should have lost it. Uh, I need to keep my composure and play as if I were just playing the pieces, not the player. Obviously, in both cases, in round one and in round uh, four, when I played a 1500 player, uh, the fact that I knew uh, my opponent's rating influenced the game. In round 4, I almost lost because he was lower rated, and in round 1, I lost because he was higher rated. And in both games, uh, the first one, I should have won. So, yeah, uh, a lot of lessons to be drawn from this tournament. Um, I'm going to analyze each game extensively on my own and uh, do an in-depth analysis of each game, trying to find example Grandmaster games and try to pick up as much as I can from them. Uh, my next tournament is going to be the finals of the Croatian Team Cup, which is on the 14th of May. Uh, so that's that's the next tournament. Luckily, then I'm, I'm going to be staying at a hotel, normal hotel. And the next open tournament, uh, I tend, I, I'm going to try to play Open Gradište, which is in the east of Croatia. It starts on... The 24th of June. So yeah, that should be my next tournament. Uh, I would really like to thank everybody for the comments and for the support. Uh, because you made the tournament possible and without it I, I couldn't go. Thanks very much. And uh, let me know what you think about this horrible opposite color bishop ending. Uh, thanks very much. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.